See, it was a great year for the Minnesota Twins, finishing atop the AL Central for the third time in the last five years. They pitched great, bunch of strikeouts by their staff. We'll um, chastise Derek Falvey about the strikeouts among their position players. That's a whole nother story, we say cheekily. Uh, they got to the postseason and won a postseason series for the first time in a long time. Derek Falvey joining us, Executive VP, Chief Baseball Operator of the Twins. Congratulations on a great year. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. I know it wasn't the, the kind of the ending you guys had envisioned after getting to the postseason, after winning that first series, but uh, when you look back, there's a lot to be proud of. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we look at the whole season in aggregate, and I, certainly you want to be the last team standing. You want to be the Texas Rangers. But ultimately, having won a postseason series for the first time in a lot of years, you know, ending that streak of losses in the postseason, a credit to the players, you know, from rookies, guys who stepped up for us like Royce Lewis, Eddie Julian, young guys, to the veterans, you know, stepping up like Carlos Correa and, and then ultimately the pitching that we had you know what Pablo Lopez did for us Sonny Gray you know so many guys through our rotation were tremendous so a lot of group that we can build on going into next year you know the crazy thing about the uh, streak of not winning in the postseason a lot of your players weren't there for the beginning middle and even much of it so how do you address that with them like hey this is this doesn't affect you the fact that they, weren't, they haven't done it in 20 years or whatever well, the best part, Harold, is they addressed it themselves. You know, they yeah. said that it was something that they were aware of, but like you said, they weren't part of a lot of it. So the only thing they could do was try and get to the postseason and show up. And if they could show up and win, they gave yeah. themselves a chance to keep going. And once we won that first game, it was electric at Target Field. We got a chance to win the second game, move on to the next round. It was just a great experience for those guys. But at the end of the season, what I was most excited about was how much they wanted to get back. That feeling of disappointment and saying, I, I don't want this feeling again. I want to get back here and do it again. I know you guys have only just started uh, your offseason work, but so far this offseason has been more defined by Sonny Gray's departure than it has whatever you're going to add in the future. <laughs> What's the plan to put those innings back? And we're not just talking about a guy who was a 500 pitcher in the middle of the rotation. He was really good for you. Yeah, Sonny was tremendous, really, over the last couple of years for us. But really, how he stepped up this year, credit to him. Obviously, he signed with the Cardinals. You know, we knew his free agency was going to take shape early. When we look at our rotation, led by Pablo Lopez, who pitched so great for us last nice year. Nice move, by the way. And, and Joe Ryan, Kudos. the way he pitched. We saw a preview of Chris Paddock in the playoffs that we think is really, now that he's healthy and coming back into our rotation, will help us. Bailey Ober, Louis Varland. We have some depth here that we can build around. So we're really excited about the way that group can go. Simeon, guys like that down who are still in AAA maturing, those guys all have a chance to help us going into next year. You know, we, we, we touched earlier, we were talking about Otani a lot and the market. And I was saying how there's only so many prospects. I think there's going to be trades. How, how does the industry navigate that when you have certain guys out there that may, names might be out there to be traded and you have to figure out what players might go where if we want to have a need for that. How do you figure that out? Yeah, it's tricky. This time of year, you're still trying to sort that all out, right? Some teams are a little more aggressive on the trade conversations. Maybe they're more interested in a couple of your players and they want to pursue that path. Others have said maybe they want to feel out the free agent market before they decide to engage in the trade market. So that's one of the toughest parts of our collective jobs in baseball ops is to figure out when's the right time to make those moves, when's the time to just pause a little bit and see how the market shapes up. So uh, it's been a little slow, as you guys have mentioned here, in the early going, particularly on the position player side, and maybe that'll change here over the next couple of days. Let's play radio talk show caller here, and I'll be an anonymous fan from Minnetonka. Um, <laughs> Derek, it's Matt from Minnetonka. I love what you do. First time caller, yeah, long time accent. listener. Uh, yeah, what are we going to do to cut down the strikeouts there? What are we going to do to cut down the strikeouts? Well, first of all, you're, you've got your flannel on. You yeah, fit I'm in right. perfectly <laughs> right. up in the upper Midwest. You look like a, a caller from our, our local area. And I will say, obviously, strikeouts are a big part of what happened for our team offensively uh, this year. You know, we look at it. We look at how we create runs, right? And, and power still plays. And sometimes power comes with some of those strikeouts. But some of it's personnel, you know, the natural ebbs and flows of who you have. We had some guys that were a little bit higher strikeout on the team this year. Maybe we have some guys stepping up, some guys that came up from the minor leagues that are already guys on the other side of that. You know, we mentioned earlier uh, when we made the trade for Pablo Lopez with Louis Arias, who was on our team last year as a low strikeout guy, we replaced that with higher strikeout fits in the lineup. Now, at the same time, we recognize it's something we want to we want to think about, but it's not something we want to overrate because the goal is to score runs. And however we're going to score runs, that's ultimately our focus. God, I respect it, the conviction. <coughs> you know, let me just yeah. follow up with one of those guys. I mean, it, it was like every time Royce Lewis stood up to the plate in the last two and a half months of the season, I, expe this, I expected this Roy Hobbs-like result. He was <laughs> going to hit a ball to the light towers. He was going to drive in anybody that was on base. 
Man, was he fun to watch. That's not a question. That's just my statement. What well, do you got on I, your I guy? could talk about that all day long. I think in this series here that you're seeing against the Blue Jays, when he hit that first one, that place erupted. I mean, it was an incredible feeling at Target Field. But then he, then he did it again. And I think for all of us around baseball, uh, when you're watching this, you know, it, you don't get taken aback very often. We've been around the game a little bit now. Yeah. That was that took us back. Yeah. He's just such a good kid. He's worked so hard through the injuries that yeah. he's had. To Can't come back. find a better kid, Incredible. man. What a special person. Really special. All right, I want to talk to you about Byron Buxton. I hammered you a lot last year. we got to get him on the field. We talked about this yesterday. And you were saying, hey, there's a plan. He's coming back to play on the field. So tell me about Buxton and, and where he stands at and what you guys are thinking. Yeah, good news. You know, he had a surgery right when the season ended, something that we felt we could address. And seven weeks post-op, he came into Minnesota last week. He's feeling really good. He's cleared from that surgery. So he'll start baseball activities here soon and progress. And our goal, our mission here is to get him into center field. That's his plan. That's what he wants. That's what we all want in spring training. You know, last year we started off with the DH, hoping that he would – build into a center field plan. Ultimately, he dealt with some things along the way that didn't allow for that to happen, but our focus, our goal, Byron's goal is to get him into center. And Michael, tell you, my, Michael played really well for you, Taylor, last year. No played doubt. Really well. Michael was huge for us. He stepped up, played a great center field all year long, you know, hit, you know, hit for power. He was the guy that really impacted us all around, but uh, we're hopeful that, you know, with Byron coming back with others in the mix, you know, we're going to be able to fill that. So, so last thing, I know you got to go, Pablo Lopez, what a trade you made. How'd that come about? And is there another one out there like that you're looking at? That's so unique. I mean, I think you rarely see a, a major league player for major league player trade with guys with control. You know, maybe as guys get closer to free agency, that happens a little more. But we felt like in Pablo, we saw some upside even beyond. He was already a really good pitcher. And to trade Louis Rice is not easy, but ultimately we were envisioning a guy who could stand at the top of our rotation, who could anchor a playoff series and hopefully build into that. He's a tremendous person, an incredible worker. He wants to continue to get better all the time. He's a great teammate, great leader. We're just really fortunate to have him now for a lot of years to come. Great stuff, Derek. I was in the ballpark when you guys clinched uh, in September. Such a great year for you. Fan support was great as it usually is in that part of the world. So congrats on a good year. Thanks for the time, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys.